a little different. One of the things that Zurich stands for is being creative. Everybody agree with that? Being innovative. How many of you ever punish your kids by sending them to the room? It's the dumbest thing you could ever do. They own everything. You want to change your kid's attitude? Send them to your room. You own nothing. My son told me, in your dreams, I sent him in the room. He said, what's in there? I said, nothing. He said, I could die in there. I said, your mother and I are willing to risk it. He came out five minutes later and says, I can't find the remote control for the little TV on the dresser. I said, you have to walk up and pull the button out. He said, every time? I said, every time you look at it? Oh, man. He came out five minutes later and said, Dad, you won't believe this. The color appears to be broken. I said, this is what old people call black and white TVs. He said, every channel? I said, yeah, oh, man. He came out and said, what are these metal pointy things? One's got foil on the end. I said, that's what really old people call rabbit ear antennas, and you got to adjust them to get one of the six channels that mommy and daddy gets on the black and white TV with no remote control. He said, just freaking shoot me now. And he never did it again. Because the consequences that control behavior are consequences that are soon certain and significant. So ladies and gentlemen, when men and women believe in the brand and the Z, when we all are one Z, when we are one brand, you are the people that bring life to this organization. When you believe in it, people need to hear it, right? Nice job, way to go. Thanks for not taking the shortcut. And when it's wrong, it's wrong. Look, I grew up in the construction industry. I was a safety director in the construction. I can still remember the superintendent telling me, sure he's drunk, but when he's sober, he's the best crane operator we have. <laughs> and you know I'm telling you the truth, right? That stuff doesn't work anymore. Look, for, everybody needs to feel value. When I travel the country, I collect do not disturb signs from hotels. I don't steal them. I mean, I pay for them and, and, and I, I barter. And you're probably saying, Bruce, why do you do that? Bruce, I'm glad you brought that up. Because whenever I am at the Marriott, I put the Holiday Inn sign on the door. <laughs> they can't stand it. You know, Marriott, 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 Holiday Inn. <laughs> Mr. Wilkinson? Yes, ma'am. You, you do know you're at a Marriott, don't you? I said, yeah, I, I checked in and everything. They said, you, you have a Holiday Inn sign on your door. I said, why do y'all do that? <laughs> we, we, we don't do that. I said, what do you think? I go around the country collecting these? <laughs> and, and she said, no, we don't think that. I said, well, it turns out I do. <laughs> and the first time I did that was the Las Vegas Hilton. And she said, why on earth would you do that? I said, what is your name? And she said, my name is Maria. Maria has a job we can't get Americans to do. Have y'all noticed that? Right? I said, Miss Marie, I wanted you to knock on my door. Because if I stay more than one night, if I've accidentally left clothes on the floor, you've picked it up for me. If I used a quarter of inch of shampoo, you gave me a whole new bottle. If I even touched the soap, you gave me a new bar. You've scrubbed my shower, my tub, and all is your job, I know. But we all need to feel valued. And here's my thank you note. There's no card in it. There's no email address. I don't want her to thank me. It always has a thank you note with $5 in it. If I don't see him, it's under the pillow. Where only she will find it under that case. Wow. You think she told her family that? Yeah. You think she told her friends that? Yeah. And then she did an amazing thing. She said, I have a friend on the fifth floor. Can I borrow some of these? <laughs> Why is it so important that we lead by example? On April 13th of last year, was a very special time. There was American Flight 352 from Atlanta to Chicago. It was a 757 with 14 men and women in first class, and unusual as this sounds, none of them were traveling together. The man in 2C was busy on his laptop. It was Adele. And basically, that's what the flight attendant said in the story in the Wall Street Journal. I don't know why. She said it was Adele, and he was drinking his coffee. And in walked an Army Ranger. Now, if you're a ranger, you know, that's Black Hawk Down. Only 10% of the toughest guys, men and women in the Army, become rangers. Rangers lead the way. Marines are first to fight. We always have that distinction. He was battle-torn and tough, wearing his BDUs. If you would call them desert fatigue. It stands for battle dress uniform. And he had his pack with him, and he drug himself back to 34C. And the fighter said, for some unreason, she didn't know why she was watching the man in 2C. But he put his coffee cup on the ground. He folded his laptop. He lifted the tray. 
He handed her the cup and said, I won't be sitting here anymore. He removed his bag from the overhead and he headed to 32C. As he approached the ranger, he said, son, have you just come home from the war? He said, yes, sir, that's a firm, sir. He said, are you heading home? He said, I'm going to see my wife, Michelle, and my little daughter, whom I've never met, is born while I'm in country there. He said, would you do me the honor of flying that last leg home in my first class seat? He said, sir, I, I couldn't let you do that for me. He said, son, I don't think you understand. You need to do that for me. And he took the seat, and the flight attendant heard him call his wife, Michelle, and he was crying, saying, you won't believe what they're doing. And then the rest of the plane started boarding with nine other rangers in amongst with the crowd. And one by one, the men and women folded their laptops, turned in their coffee, removed their bags, and stepped to the rear until every ranger had a first-class seat. And there were two more men and women willing to give up seats than there were rangers. This is not a great story. Had two C stood up and said, come on, let's all give him our seats. It's a great story because he led by example. And one after one, other Americans tried to give back for those who serve. That's what makes this a great story. Yeah, that's who we are. That's who we've always been. There's two things I want you to remember as we start to go to lunch. And, and you know, when you, when, you, when you make every move count, You've got to understand that you've got to pay attention. Because yield signs have been read <laughs> for 18 years.